so the jig is complete did i actually show you what what i'm making yeah if i did good if i didn't here we are this is basically a jig for the subframe the subframe for the clio is absolutely humongous 17 kilograms we can reuse that t45 naturally so I made this jig and it's going to be a dual purpose jig. So this one in particular with these sort of stand tops, this is basically mimics the, the mounting points that I had on mine. I'm running like Luna hubs and it's wide and blah, 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 blah. But I'm going to make those inserts so you can actually, I can actually produce standard fitment clear, literally bolt on with your standard everything. Anyways, this one is what it is. So I made little sort of razor cups for the fronts uh, the rears are really really sexy i actually had to machine the little sort of uh, thing like that on my lathe absolutely incredible thing already cut a pipe so it's going to be 25 mil uh, gauge 14 i think or 12 i can't remember what i ordered fairly thick tube 25 mil most of the tubes the rear one is 31 mil uh, just because it holds the uh, steering rack and also the rear engine dog bone like this so I figured it slightly thicker um, so obviously those caps you've seen that that's uh, Sean Gosling uh, did a design for me and cut and everything and I welded those back in <laughs> I won't be able to do this without one of these. Da da da! I really want to buy one. This one has been bored from Geese Fab. Thank you, mate. Finally, I know it's like third time I'm borrowing this, and this is the first time I'm actually using it because there's just so many other things you need to do before you start bending. This is basically a tube bender. You put your tube in, and you can bend. So this is a little tube for the front that I already bent. There is two bends, one here, one there all spot on and now we need to notch it notching basically means you cut a tube into this shape well so it goes over ah, see so it goes super neat around the tube um german made uh, tube notcher this is kind of your sort of home diy type expensive tool because you can buy really cheap ones on aliexpress or whatever they're crap this one is actually quite expensive, but it has like proper bearings on the inside. It's full aluminum. It's not that expensive. I mean, cheaper than sort of a proper, proper setup that I've used at Sean's workshop, but it works. And because I'm not really in production, as in I'm not doing, you know, uh, two cages a week and stuff, it's fine. It works fine. The consumable is obviously the, the cutting cups, but they're fairly cheap. Um, yeah, so you sort of adjust the height and everything, and now we're going to cut it. A little bit of lubrication. Just like that. You see, it notched it. Yay! <laughs> Good. So now we have this bar, we have this bar. The most difficult one is this bar. There's a number of bands. The way this is an off cut. So this one, as you can see, will go straight and then we'll reinforce it um, around or something like that. And then it needs to be a band in here, in this space. And then in here, the band needs to go 
sort of down-ish, as you can see, and li link up with this pipe, or actually link up with this one directly. You know what, that's probably a better idea, right? So we link up here and here, so literally to this cup, and then we can put in a little A reinforcement in here just to straighten things out. On the original subframe we have plenty of space because obviously this tube is going to be running like this and like this. So all this is redundant, we're kind of removing it so a little A in here in the corner would not be a miss. But moments later you're so stiff. I just made a little rethinking. Instead of doing it sort of straight down like this and then there's a bend here bend there there's like three bends and going down nice and simple like this um, we are not limited by the angle of this because obviously on here there's no real angle because they are sort of rose joints they can sort of go as long as there is enough space and there's definitely enough space for it to go so we can rotate those and it makes it so much easier we're literally doing a single notch here onto that tube and then there's a single bend going down into here um, once that bend is done I could literally just clock it ever so slightly so it doesn't go if you can see difficult to show you so it doesn't go straight down so it goes slightly to the side like that so then if you can see it will link up we're literally about 10 mil off of the center line of the that little cup standoff but yeah, single bend, bend it outwards, two notches, and then this tube is done. And then <laughs> finish straight, literally just a couple of reinforcements. Ah, this will be really, really, really interesting. This is basically uh, standoffs for a uh, steering rack. Uh, again, 25 mil tube. Uh, Eden cut me some, uh, some uh, washer type sort of elongated things. Um, I'm not sure how to do this, but most likely, most likely, we're gonna do sort of an A-frame. So from here, it will go link up with this one, like that, on both sides. And then we either, from here, go to there, like that, and then literally link this up, or do it as we play. I'm gonna quickly show you how I use this. It's not a tutorial how to use this, just, you know, content. So we basically put the tube. I already measured. I already measured the legs we need. We need um, 45, 450 millimeter leg at the top. It's not critical because the bend can be almost anywhere. So rough guide 450 and I need about a 30 degree bend. But again, because it's not that critical, I'm gonna leave extra at the end. So not 45, but 40, 407. So then if the band doesn't line up where we need it to line up, then we can just sort of move it and the band will sort of shift left to right. And then we'll just have to copy it on the second one. So you basically, the start of the band, you measure from inside here, put your tube in, and then you basically just lock your thing in. Take a tape measure and you measure. This is 400. It was a bit premature to. T45 is very expensive. So we have 470. So we basically left ourselves to, to, to um, 20, 20 millimeters extra above what I measured. Then you kind of just tighten your tube onto the thing. Um, you have to do it by feel. You can't sort of overdo it because otherwise, well, not so critical on this one, but if it's a roll cage, it will leave a dimp, dimple or a mark on the tube. But because this one is not critical at all. And then, yeah, everything is aligned. So then we basically create a little bit of tension. So this is where the tube is going to start bending from. And then we align our gauge at zero and we need 30 degrees. And we basically start bending about 10 degrees now, about 20 degrees now, about 25 degrees now, 30 degrees. Also, 
well, while using this, you need to know the springiness of the material. Some tube, for example, copper, if you were to bend it by hand, once you bend it, it stays in shape. Same goes for the aluminium. This is sort of high tensile T45 tube, so it will spring back. So I've just reached 30 degrees. And as soon as I released it, it went past four degrees back. So now we're 26, we need 30. So you kind of need to allow for this sort of springiness. And it's all done by feel, so to speak. So we kind of go past. We're 29 now. Good. So all the pipes are pre-cut, everything is notched, and I even polished them. I mean, look how amazing this looks. And now, just need to choose which one I'm going to be using. <laughs> yes, Artec 181 MIG and 170 TIG. Obviously, the whole thing is going to be TIG. But what I'm not sure is if I want to tack everything in place with a MIG. Put me in the comments if you think that's a good idea to do a few tags with the mix so it's all together and then go over with a with a tick. I'm a little confused. Probably made up my mind already. Anyways, the jig is inside. It's been sitting outside. It's been taking me days and it's been raining on occasions and stuff. So you can see a bit of surface rust. Don't really care because it's just surface rust. It will still function as intended. So all the tubes are there, all the sort of standoffs, everything is clean. Even made this sort of DIY polishing machine. Dangerous, but obviously pipe protection is key. And I'm standing to the side like this. Um, yeah, all these shiny bits need to go into these bits with this shiny bit welding it together. One morning a week later. Ta-da! So, <laughs> I missed all of the steps how I was welding it because I figured, to be honest with you, I just wanted to get things done. And it took me quite a long time on and off, it, almost over a week, you know, just doing this and that because I was trying to be super careful and not overheat and place this metal so it doesn't stretch or whatever, so it doesn't fit. I tested it and it fits back on the jig, off the jig, so it did not shrink any significant amount and contract or whatever so yeah that's one of the reasons why i didn't film it for you guys but it's just a bit of welding just me sitting and sort of doing it like that and there is no sort of real steps i am extremely happy and chuffed how it um, sort of turned out it's super good the important thing you're probably asking was the weight rusky 7.8 kilograms as it sits yes the original one is almost 18 so we're saving a good solid 10 kilograms from the front right under the engine obviously it's not going to be noticeable obviously it's not going to translate into lap times but overall as a package as a weight loss program for the car it's still ongoing sort of struggle we want it as light as possible and this will absolutely work it's t45 won't be able to give you the specs i forgot the thicknesses but yeah those tubes are thicker than the normal ones um, and fantastic just to sort of a uh, little side note kind of thing this is a replica of the subframe that i had on my mind i am running pure motorsport uh tubular wishbones and laguna hubs so obviously this is not the same as an your mark II clear but i have a jig and i'm gonna be making those insert things for those um wishbones for original uh, mark II. so you can well I want to say you can commission me to build you one of those, but honestly, it's going to be expensive. The amount of material and weld, and it almost took me a whole bottle of gas to do it. I'm not going to do them cheap. I really don't want to do another one. So if you really want one, it's going to cost you. But I have a jig and I'll make it and it'll be super strong and much lighter. Um, but yeah, obviously it will need uh, anti-roll bar mounting points. So I have those on here. Uh, no, that's for the original um, uh, radiator. My radiator is different. That's why I don't have anything. I will need to weld those in places, little tabs, because I'm going to reposition it. Uh, but yeah, um, I do have... Um, what are they? What are they? Ah, they are on the other... Anyways, 
it will have all the mounting points that you need for your anti-roll bar, your original wishbones, obviously those things. Um, it will not have um, fixing points for that little brace at the bottom, those two, there is no need for them. Unless you really want to, it's possible to introduce them, because I actually kept uh, mounting points, so I could theoretically introduce them. The next step would be basically put it back in. I want to, because uh, Pure Motorsport, they give you little, I don't have them here with me. They're like little sort of, you know how on your Mark II Clear you have uh, um, those sort of extension bits that bolt in onto the chassis leg as well, just as extra support. So PMS comes with four, we're only going to use two. So I'll need to fit it because I don't want to make new ones. And I'll basically just be able to align uh, well the new tab on the side, just so they bolt in just for extra reinforcement and then yeah literally just powder coat the whole thing uh most likely it will be the same gray as everything else i'm really happy with that color and we don't want it to stand out we don't want it pink or yellow or green or anything like that you know it's a functional part yeah fit it all back in and um probably show you three weeks later many weeks later so this is the final piece all painted all bolted even have the suspension already bolted to it. Everything is pretty much torqued up. Obviously hasn't been tested because the engine is still not inside, but dimensionally it's all exactly the same, even more open on the center. So I see no reason why the engine would not fit. Since I shown you the previous version while I was still welding it, I've added um, obviously my uh, quick release split amounts. Uh, on the previous one, they were bolted to the subframe, but I thought, I'm never taking them off, so may as well just weld them in and it's uh, nice and easy. Um, a few reinforcements, reinforcing bars, so this bar just to make sure this is more reinforced. Obviously a little plate here like a gusset. And I've introduced these little things. On the original Clio you have those anyways. So I thought, you know what, if um, French engineers deemed it's necessary, I may as well add them because obviously this span between here and here is quite long and no matter how you reinforce it I just did not feel comfortable not running them um, so yeah everything is bolted we have uh, a mount for the front front the gearbox mount I have the dog box mount in here I will probably end up welding two tabs for the radiator I'm still not sure how I'm gonna fit that because I have a few ideas the the steering rack is all bolted everything checks out uh, and it's all painted exactly the same nardo gray as the rest of the car so it's kind of all seamless i didn't want to go for red or yellow or whatever orange it doesn't need that super happy basically what i did is saved around 10 kilograms and wasted uh, three weeks of my time welding it but i did thoroughly enjoy it uh, this was long time coming i want to thank Sean Gosling for designing the and cutting the the mounts for for the for the arms yeah guys thank you very much for watching if you want one of those I can make you one this is obviously for pure motorsport uh, tubular things I do have a jig for standard subframe it's not going to be cheap but if you want one you just know that the solution is out there and it's possible to to get something save yourself some weight and uh, relieve yourself from some uh, hard-earned cash anyways guys thank you very much for watching i will see you on the next one bye bye